once the character had been approved of, they asked me to redraw it in a cleaner way uh, so we can clearly see all the details and especially her face since that one wasn't really showcased well in the original sketch. It also gives us the chance to fix some choices that don't work completely. Uh, we can simplify some elements and maybe think a bit more logical about how the different parts connect and overlap each other. We are eventually going to have to think more in 3D since uh, we will have to create an ortho sometime soon. <laughs> so it's, it's better to figure out as much as possible before that point and this is a nice place to do that. I took a deeper look into what sort of facial features I wanted to give her. Uh, I was looking for a youthful but not naive looking face. She needed to look confident but friendly at the same time. And I feel like these women had most of these features. I was looking for um, a, mostly a slightly slimmer face with uh, a sharp chin, a rounded nose and a strong expressive eyebrows. Of course, we're not going full realistic, so I will exaggerate some features. One of these being the eyes. <laughs> I really want her eyes to tell you she knows what she's doing and she is very passionate about her job. Remember when I said I don't care too much about the individual parts yet, like the clasp or the back? Uh, well, this is the moment I started caring. <laughs> We've successfully gotten to a point where all the bigger problems are solved and now we're free to tackle these uh, other parts more in depth. Aside from that, I also gave her the same value grouping as the original one, but applied them cleaner overall. Uh, we now have to translate these values into colors instead, and a fast and efficient way of doing this would be by using gradient maps. Uh, it allows you to set a gradient of colors from dark to light on a part that you select, like for example her skin. Uh, you can set the darker tone to something warmer and the lighter tone to something cooler, for example. Once you return to the value layer underneath, you can then start shading and giving everything some uh, much needed definition so that the colors aren't so flat. Uh, the gradient map layer on top will follow the values you draw underneath, so it's easy to keep control over the values separately from the colors, uh, like this. This is also very convenient for later, once uh, we have a color, good color scheme that we like. Uh, we can just copy the whole thing and sliding around the colors in these gradient maps to create something different uh, while not really having to paint uh, any, anything new. I attempted to do some pattern designing at first. I uh, wanted to draw out a stroke that I could then add to the dress and change the colors manually to see what that would look like. Uh, however, in the end, I decided to not go forward with it uh, due to time constraints. I didn't have that much time to come up with too many colors and uh, I would rather have a couple messier color patterns than fo focusing solely on making one look really good. So. At this point, I'm also not sure how many iterations I will make. It's all dependent on how many ideas pop up uh, or grow naturally. I did, however, once again, did some research into what color combinations I could do and collected references for those. The first color option is surprisingly far away from the references I gathered in the beginning. I wanted to try a bolder color combination first to see how that would look. Uh, in one of my many alternate image scrolling sessions, <laughs> I found this picture and it inspired me to create a cohesive combination between a very muted or soft green and whitish colors, uh, like the ones in the refs, and a much bolder color like orange or red added tastefully uh, in some specific areas. I figured making the whole dress or the big sleeves such a prominent color might be too much. So I kept it contained to just these few accessories. Since I kept the uh, attention grabbing colors to a minimal, I felt like I could be a bit bolder with the shapes for the pattern. So I gave the dress this big dark boulder at the edges in where I could add strong golden patterns of some kind. 
I found these two references and I really love the bold but elegant view of them. They really give me this royal feeling somehow. And as long as it's once again balanced with a lot of whites and non patterned areas, I think it should work fine. I mean areas that are void of anything else so that the areas that are bolder and stronger stand out nicely without busying the overall design. The values stayed pretty close to the original concepts. Her hair and skin are dark with a warm undertone. I, I feel like it complements the warmth in the green and the orange of the clothes. Even the big white part of her dress isn't really white but more like a warm off-white-ish instead. So it's all very warm and sunny feeling to me. Um, I think it's quite a successful color iteration in terms of balancing elements. I feel like I did a good job translating the value to interesting colors that give you the feeling she's like uh, royal and all that. She knows luxury, uh, she walks amongst the gods and such. Uh, a very sunny and warm approach, I think. My only gripe with this one, however, is that it might be too warm. And I know that sounds weird since I just praised that and all that, but coming from the first ideas where I imagined her a lot more muted and earthy, um, blending in nicely with the forests and mountains and such, perhaps she's lost a bit of that SKP artist adventurer brewer vibe or something. <laughs> like she's no longer about hiding or running away in dangerous situations. Um, and I also cannot shake the subtle Roman Empire looking aesthetic I'm getting from this one. I feel like if I would give her an axe right now, she could be a slayer in a Colosseum <laughs> or something similar. Uh, a look I was totally not going for. So yeah, those are my feelings about this one. All in all, a good attempt. I'm pretty pleased. It might not be the one that's chosen in the end, but we'll await the, the client's feedback. It's kind of funny how I said the orange from the previous one being contained to only a couple elements was like good balancing and stuff. <laughs> and now that I present you with this opposite sentiment, <laughs> it tends to happen a lot where whenever I strictly tell myself, oh, it's probably good if you don't do this or you shouldn't do that, but then I'm making variations anyway, I might as well break some of my own rules and just do it to see if my rules even make any sense. <laughs> anyway, that's one of the reasonings why I wanted to try this combination. Uh, another reason was this bold color combination I found in these couple images of this dress. It's far removed from the original intent that I felt a little weird about it, but I couldn't not try this luxurious and bold combination. The orangey parts aren't even orange, but more like a very yellow looking gold. And if you look closely, it has these really pretty looking engraving like patterns on the sleeves and chest area. Uh, and the black is more like a very dark muted blue as well. I imagined it looking really nice on her dark, dark skinned character, like she's like glowing warms, uh, like the sun or something. I made her hair a little lighter for this though. I feel like with this one, I am already pushing the values a bit too dark for it to stay nice and readable, so this felt like a natural thing to change. Uh, I still kept it warm in tone, because to me there were already two contrasting warm and cold elements happening, uh, the blues versus the warm uh, dress and skin, and I didn't want her hair to also be another different type of cool uh, added to the mix that would just fight with the blues. I, I wanted the blues to be the only cool element in this, if uh, if that makes sense. For the patterns, since the colors are so extremely bold, I really needed to tone it down. So uh, no big dark boulder. I, I found this cloak instead uh, with a similar blue and decided that this might be a good way to introduce some softer, more delicate patterns, uh, like little flowers and embroidered greenery uh, might bring back uh, nature and the earthy tones and the tea making and hopefully balance out all the bolder elements a little bit. I personally in the end think that this one is less successful in terms of reaching the right vibe for the character. Uh, 
Uh, however, I'm still inclu including it in the lineup because perhaps the clients see something in it that I don't. And maybe they get a whole new idea about the personality or motives of the character that they might want to shift to, for example. Uh, I think it's never wrong to do some bold color changes in the rough color pass part. If there's one moment where you're allowed to stretch in many different directions just to see what that would do, it's to me the color pass. <laughs> um, you would rather have a couple completely different approaches at first. Uh, this is where the chance that they like one of these approaches is much higher than if you were to make like three or four versions where all the colors are basically the same and they have the same intentions but are with smaller changes in between. I mean, if I had chosen to only do muted color variations, like a soft green or a soft yellow or a soft blue, and then it turns out that they don't like the soft part in these and it doesn't work in general, then all four or three or how many you've made immediately don't work. Uh, spread your chances and be a bit bolder with the separation between the choices. I think in the end it's safer. Or maybe that's just my elaborate excuse to be able to use these beautiful colors. Who knows? <laughs> Since I now have two color variations that are completely outside the original concept and references, I felt like it's time to get back to making one that I completely envisioned from the beginning. I'm not sure why I didn't start with this one. Uh, that would have been a lot more logical to do uh, the safe and clear one first before expanding towards more bolder choices. But I guess I felt like this choice was uh, so on the nose or something that starting out with it might lock me in that look because of bias and then I might not have a good idea about how I could expand it or do something new perhaps. Maybe that's why I unconsciously postpone it so I wouldn't trap myself. So anyway, this is the look that comes the closest to what I envisioned. Uh, to me, she now embodies the true, delicate and luxurious tea brewer that's fit to meet the gods and uh, once she's created her new magnum opus tea blend. <laughs> uh, I made everything as soft and muted shades of green and white. Uh, although I think the big pattern border from the first would clash with this one, it's a little boring without some defining colors, so uh, I added a darker green boulder at the bottom instead, and I took some inspiration from these references for the intricate embroidered flowers. Uh, my reasoning for these pink flowery patterns is that on all that white, it truly looks a little bit like a ceramic teapot, <laughs> and I thought that was a cute detail. Furthermore, I think her dark skin and hair truly stand out more beautiful against all the white on her dress right now. Um, I made her hair a bluish black and gave her skin a cool undertone to go alongside the new cooler and softer tones of the rest. I think if I kept her skin and hair warm like in the previous one, the contrast would be a little too jarring perhaps and a little vari variety in skin undertones and hair was welcome at this point, so I just went with it. In the end, whether I think this color variation is successful or not is uh, kind of hard to say yes or no to, personally. I really love these colors, they feel good, they are balanced, they vibe with the concepts, etc. However, uh, spoiler alert, the client made a really good point in their criticism against choosing this iteration. They mentioned that even though they think the colors are really nice, these colors are a beautiful palette for an illustration, but not for a game character design. Um, this completely came out of the left field for me. I really didn't, I hadn't thought about there even being much of a difference between those yet. So. Uh, to hear that was really eye-opening to me, and I asked them to explain it. And they told me uh, a game character generally has something popping out of their design, something that catches your eye and keeps you engaged. You'll be looking at a big world where this character is traversing through, and imagine walking in a forest with this character. You're running, dodging, jumping, but then you lose track of your character because they 
don't stand out and you're like ah no where am i ah i'm deaf and they blend in too much with the rest of the world so my misguided thinking was a little too logical where i wanted this character to blend in be sneaky be an escape artist and it would make total sense if they are an earthy color palette in this scenario but it does not make sense on a game design perspective so there needs to be consideration in that aspect uh, me not thinking about this element of design brought me back to my shortcomings and knowing that my illustration background intervened with this process wasn't really surprising in hindsight however <laughs> i'm very appreciative towards the client that they were open to explaining and letting me learn through this process for the fourth color variation, I really wanted to try uh, to step away uh, from the original value setup the most, having one of the four options being one that breaks the mold a bit should be safe to do at this point. So that's what I did. I had a hunch that a very light colored hair together with uh, white gold instead of regular gold would look really interesting. So I opted for this soft mint hue uh, for me that it really gives off this ethereal feeling. Uh, she, she looks less human and more god servant instead. And once again, her skin tone really pops well with this lighter hair color. For her dress, I went with an inverted with inverted values, making the original light inner dress part be a darker muted green, while I have the outer part be the white area. Uh, for the patterns, I was really inspired by the dresses in these images. The flowery pattern on them has a different, more shiny material to them than the rest of the dress, which is a more matte material. This way we could have the pattern be bold and intricate all over the bottom part without it being so busy that it takes away the attention too much. And the shiny on matte material did seem really luxurious looking in my head. Uh, I also extended this darker pantyhose material from her socks to the rest of her legs and added it to the arms as well for a bit more layering effect. I really do like the color combination in the end. It hits something different that the others don't. However, I'm a little lukewarm to it in terms of hitting the concept. She loses some of that tea brewer energy a little for me. And maybe it's the sleeves, but there is also something assassin-like happening with this one that I can't put my finger on. Uh, in the end, it's an extra option. And I will send it along with the others to the client and let them decide what they like. I already told you about the conflict with some of the variations not fitting the game design aspect and such. Um, the client explained to me that they really liked the first option uh, because of the nice balancing and values and they would love for me to go forward with that one. Um, however, I was super fortunate enough that the client was open to hearing me out about my thoughts. Me finding the first one perhaps too Roman looking and the third one hitting the Brewer vibe more in my opinion. They allowed me to make a combination where we both hit the game character design criteria and hit the moods and concepts we wanted to go for from the start. I want to stress how fortunate this is. Usually you just do what the client chooses. They get the final pick because they know best what their game is about and how they want to portray it through their characters and the world and such. Uh, this is the norm, uh, but since our project is not a general client-artist dynamic, things could go a little different. There is no world yet, there is no concept, there is only uh, the, the concept of the game that we, the three artists, came up with loosely ourselves. So we are allowed to establish the world and have more freedom in deciding what the rules even are. And I was given quite some opinion rights and I could voice my thoughts freely. <laughs>